guys you're gonna really love this video um wow 1800s i'm in them cedar historic garden but with this guy he's gonna tell me the full title of the place you're gonna love this place guys and i'm gonna have to cut this video so drastically because Paolo, what's it called this place? See the Bastion Cemetery and Historic Garden. Let's go Floriana, guys. In Floriana. Uh, oh, in not Florida. in Cedar, not in <laughs> Let's go guys, you're gonna love it. This is my island in the sun. Made it. We're right down in the depths of the bastion, MC the bastion. But it's changed from the last time. I've got a, a very good friend of mine. His her daughter uh, does poet. If you're interested, she writes books in Maltese. Though um, when she's next over, I might try and get an interview with her. She wrote. We came here oh many many years ago before it was walled off. But sadly, they had to wall it off because was a lot of uh, damage and vandals and that sort of thing. We're at the MC, the Bastion Historic Garden from 1806. Now I won't blast you with a lot of history because there is a lot of history in this place. Um, Joyce, remember we did the tower. I don't know if it's gone up before this or after this. Joyce at the uh, over in Witazuri. She's a treasure. She said, come over and look at this garden because she's doing volunteers here as well. So these are the times they're open, guys. Mostly in the morning. It's a, it's a donation as well, two euros when you come in. Like 9.30, 12 every day. And Sunday, oh, the same, on the, on the first of each month. So we're gonna go in, God. There's lots of history. Like, like I say, I'm not gonna blast you with a lot of history, but the cemetery was part of a general non-Catholic burial ground outside Valletta. They're gonna, gonna give you that. Freeze it. What's really interesting, there's a Maltese guy here that, um, that's buried here, apart from all the rest, which we're gonna find, because Joyce told me if he can get Paolo, he's an Italian guy, he's a mind of information, so it's gonna be another tour, guys. Let's go in. So it's open, plans and books for sale. Let's walk in. So this is the entrance. Oh, the door is a bit tight. Oh, wow, look at this. So here it is, look, many information about it here. Lots of books here. And this is roughly where we are. MC the Bastion Cemetery. Wow, you're gonna be blown away. Oh, look at this. And they've got plants for sale if you're interested. Uh, hello. Good morning. <laughs> what a beautiful place. We're going to look for Paolo. He's the mind of information. Oh, how are you? You Paolo? Yes. Oh, ooh, this is steep going down here. Wow, well, this looks very good. Hello, pleased Hello, to meet hi, you. Paolo. I'm Englishman, hi, and you are? I'm Sarah. Sarah. Hey, can you show me just a little bit? Of course not. Why, why not? But I think this it's one, gonna, it's so much is here though. Uh, this one is the oldest. Uh, yeah. The only one of the original British cemeteries that survived in Malta. Oh, wow. When the British at the very beginning came to Malta, they had a big issue. No places where to bury the people. Ah, okay. Mainly not Catholics. Uh -huh. So at the very beginning, they set up uh, cemeteries in empty spaces or useless spaces. And we're, what a view! Uh, what, what a view to be buried. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll all... tell you, Paul. If I want to, when I die, can you find a place it's for full, me? It's full. I'm sorry. Oh, can you just shove yeah, me in the no, corner somewhere? I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's I'm only small. Look, <laughs> six foot two. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> By the time I die, you, I might shrink down a little bit. Uh, the standard, the standard size, six. Uh, six so feet. this is you doing a little bit of what are you doing? Um, I'm doing a project. Yeah. And I decided to do it here. I and you with Paolo is a sidekick, they call it. Yes. I, you, uh, are you going to show me a little bit then, Paolo? Yeah, of course. So you're trying to learn what's going on around yes. here and a bit of history. As I told you, it's full. Yeah. Everywhere you see the grass. Uh, if you dig, uh, and do not dig, please. Uh, she just if told me. To, she just told me to dig. She said, "Have no. you bought the spade?" <laughs> yeah. No, do not dig, please. You find the grave. It's full. Oh wow! It was closed in 1857 because it was full. There are around 900 people here. Wow. Mainly British. 900. Eh? 900. Mainly British, but also Maltese, foreigners. Very few foreigners. So you could creep me in a British, a, sm a small British. <laughs> you Let's are in the right, right, right place, <laughs> but in, in the wrong time. And you've got some beautiful plants and trees, eh? We have more than 150 different kind of plants and flowers. And this is a bit planted slippery. by Take us here, or self-seeded. The only original. So, Paolo, underneath all these, are people? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Absolutely. Everywhere. So what would it be like if you to get buried here? What sort of person would you have to be? Uh, would you have to be military or...? Not really. Anybody that was not a Catholic or Catholics with, uh, with uh, uh, issues. Oh, you have to be Catholic. The Catholic Church, yeah, yeah. not Catholic. Oh, not Christian, Catholic. Oh, uh, that's right then, not Catholic. Catholic. Or Catholic with issues with the church. Oh, okay. So yeah, would you have cases. to be something special to come here? Like a... Not really. Oh, okay. Simply was uh, so there is military people here as mainly well, mainly army and family, maybe and the... the families, but also some civilians. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot of missionaries, because uh, in the half of the 19th century, they used to bring here a lot of missionaries to oh, convert okay. uh -huh. the Maltese to different religions. Ah. So some, because there's some big ones as well. Yeah. Big one is a neoclassical monument. It's very ah. interesting. Come on then, Paula, let's have a quick... He's a busy guy and they're going to be closing soon, so we'll try and condense <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this absolutely. fantastic place. But come, guys, there's the times, I've told you. As a Donation, two euros, come in. It's well worth it, two euros, to come in here. What uh, a place. As eh? you can see, there are... It's a cemetery, but there are very few crosses. Oh, OK. And for a historical reason. <laughs> it was built in a period, the first part of the 19th century, that was called... Uh, Neoclassical for the architecture. Oh, okay. So here, the Belgian mainly built copies and replicas of, of Romans, Greeks. So you but can also see a Egyptian lot of monuments, uh, of course. That is a oh, classic. Is a sarcophaga, a sarcophagus. Yeah. Uh, with a nice detail about. Uh, yeah. That is uh, an acanthus leaf, uh -huh. or acanthus. It's a wild plant, very common in the south of Europe. The Romans used this leaf on the monuments to symbolize the immortality. Oh, okay. So you find a lot of these on the original Romans monuments Beautiful work, yeah. and a lot in the garden, the most copied symbol. So what year was this? Do you know the... The symbolism is very strong, as you can see. Each monument has its own symbol more than one sometimes. Yeah. This one is also very interesting. Is this like a family one? Would be more than one? No, of them most of them are uh, individual oh, okay. graves. Okay, because Mortis, Mortis tend to build these big ones yeah, mostly. And put all the whole family in. But uh, consider that these people were here on duty. So yeah, I they were in Malta for two years, uh, Sri Lanka, India, uh -huh. Gibraltar, uh -huh. back to Malta. So not really family. And we're going to try and price some stories. He's got some fantastic stories. Of Joyce course. was telling me so. We'll try and get some I interesting. Have some nice, I have some nice stories for you. But we've got to be careful of the video, <laughs> not to stretch it on, because I, I'm already sorry. I'm seeing this. We're going <laughs> to. We could be have like two or three hours. What do you think, oh, guys? Least, Are you in for it? <laughs> I did a I did a video of Floriana. They did a, a tour around Floriana yeah. Church, and it was one hour and forty minutes ah, or something. Yeah, because ah. by the time they'd gone into all the history and on top of the roof with the bells and here, things like that. Here we can stay for more. If okay, you want, uh, no problem. I should have brought my bed with me then. <laughs> I show you something. That's okay. Really yeah, let's just touch on a few, and then we'll leave. We we'll leave something, guys. We we'll leave it for you to come. We we'll want you to come and have a look. Well, there's a lot of work, and there's work going on here as well, Paolo. You've this got one, some uh, uh, some some work going on. Here. Let's, let's. No, it's let's okay. Show, just I want to show you this. Okay. That is the true example oh, this is of a big the one, uh. neoclassical art. Yeah. If you go to Rome, Vatican's museums in the crypt, uh -huh. you can see a sarcophagus, build 200 and 70 years before Christ wow. for Scipione Barbato. 
This one build more than 2000 years later for John Hookan Frere. Okay. And his wife is a copy. It's a replica. Uh -huh. The same flowers, the same top, the same features. Uh -huh. Exactly the same sarcophagus. Little bit bigger, but it's a copy. Oh. And that's an example. We have nice. This one again, that is a copy of a Roman sarcophagus. Exactly the same you can see in Rome or oh, yeah. in a Roman. Yeah, I've in been, a Roman uh, Rome uh, is ruins. very interesting. Huh? And uh, this is an interesting part, I okay. There are very nice pieces. Eh? Hello. This one, this one is the contamination. That is uh, a Roman sarcophagus uh, from the late part of. Is a copy, of course. Eh? Yeah. The late part of the Roman Empire. So bath tube shape, ma the legs. Uh, on the legs is depicted with a spiral. So would they be buried in the in the no, bath? No, oh, the down. graves are oh, okay. six feet under. Oh, okay. It's just a monument on the top. Uh -huh. Mind the legs. You lots can of see. restoration work going on. Yes, there. we are doing a lot of work. Uh, we are, uh, unfortunately, our stone is not the greatest stone. No, the limestone uh, oh, wow. is very fragile. And lots of. Hey, Paul, you could go on forever with this. They're fantastic. Eh? Here we have a, 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 a quiz or a riddle. Yeah. Susanna Frere, filia, daughter, born the day when St. Paul became Christian. So you have to know when day and month St. Paul became a Christian to know when she was born. Ah, okay. In 1777. So that's a good, I might leave something like that behind. <laughs> I don't know. Keep them guessing on my I'm coffee. Eh? I, don't, I don't know, to be honest. Little Personally. Little. That was the fortification. Oh, this so is the gate I was saying. That's the original British entrance. Yeah, I saw it when I walked in. I might show a little bit. And here, to remember us, that was the fortification. We have some gun emplacement. You can see they're restoring here. We are right. restoring uh, the carriage. That are British guns from the King... And they're big ones, eh, those. King George III. You can see from the ciphers or ciphers of the King on the top of the barrel. There is a number three, a G and an R. George Rex III, King uh -huh. George III. King of England, 1760, wow, no, no, 1820. Yeah. Yeah. We have some nice people here, eh? They're very quiet people as well. Very quiet. <laughs> uh, you don't hear a lot. <laughs> Sir Harry <laughs> Pottinger. Sir Harry Pottinger was the first governor of Hong Kong. The first governor of Cape of Good Hope. He was a, a governor of Madras. He was a diplomat. Oh, okay. He was the man that signed the end of a war between the Chinese Empire and the British Empire, the first Opium War. Wow. It was also the first British. A lot to of go. information, I think. <laughs> are, you, are you taking all this yeah, in? Okay. So much information. The first British that went to Afghanistan by himself, uh -huh. disguised like a Muslim. Oh, okay. So he had a quite rich life. He retired. He came to Malta, he died in Malta. And unfortunately, his monument was bombed during the war. We got like a Cleopatra's obelisk. Oh, obelisk, obelisk yeah. Yeah. And the view is still a nice view from here. Oh, yeah. no, I won't show them that polo because no. it's <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Manuel Island, Fort Manuel. It's a shame this was built after yes, it. Yes, and the and the Maltese Navy. Yes, Maltese Navy is here, yeah. Maritime Squadron. <laughs> wow, and look at the views, also... guys. Eh? Tashbish in front of us. Uh -huh. The yeah, I did. Uh, I did something. See, I can't okay. remember. And uh, what is nice here is uh, the presence of uh, Manuel Island. There is uh, a building in front of us yeah. with the arches. Yeah, yeah. That is the, Lazare the whole... Lazaretto, uh -huh. quarantine building. Yeah. Everybody came to Malta. I did a little bit of history on that. Okay. Uh, so you what is interesting? Uh, you see that uh, there is a, a small watchtower just in front of us. Oh yeah. Behind. Uh, there is a small squarish building, you can see the back. It's a chapel, St. Rock Chapel. I think this is the one I walked. Ground to Excelsior. So, from that chapel, the priest was very smart at the time. He didn't go on Manuel Island for the Sundays, mass, risky, some strange diseases. He used to hold the mass shouting from that chapel across the creek to the people on Manuel Island or wow. the people on the ships in the harbour are just 200 meters, so it's not so far. At the other side of the creek, after the skyscrapers, there is a 
Fortigny. You uh, can Fortigny. see. Yeah, I did, uh, Fortigny was the last fortification built by the nation of Malta in oh. 1797. Wow. What a, what a view from here. The view is um, at night. They yeah. probably get up and have a look around. They. Eh? Is there any ghost stories, <laughs> Paolo? Yes, of course. Go on, let's get. Let's <laughs> go on. Let's have a ghost story while we're walking around. A ghost story? Yes, yes, yes. I ever seen anything in my life here, eh? But a lady, but a lady, told me a story. This lady was uh, outside the wall in the winter 2012 in a car, and uh, at one point. Uh, her boyfriend started to shout, very scary. Start, start the car, go, 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 go. They left. When they stopped, she asked him, what's happened? And he said, between you and the wall, in a so small space, yeah. I saw a boy, oh. 11 years old. <laughs> Believe me. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> She's scared. <laughs> There are 900 people buried here. Shall we come down tonight and stay here? Only we'll bring one. A flask and... <laughs> Only one boy died 11 years old. Oh, okay. Nobody else. Yeah, I've come across those stories. How would she and know? And that boy know? died the day of Christmas, 1871. Oh, wow. So, for some reasons, uh, they saw something. Fantastic views. You can see also oh, this is all... the gardens of Villa Frere from here. Oh, this is very... This is all you, though, isn't that it? That is a part of the garden, yes. Oh, okay. That is the more interesting part of the garden. So we go to the more interesting yeah, part yeah, of the absolutely. garden. Let's okay. go. Because time is running out, guys. And you don't click away because we've got something really important to show you. This is going to be spectacular, guys. Don't click away from us. Paolo. We are, restoring some, we are doing some work of yeah. restoration at the moment. Yeah. yeah. You can see, like, they're uh, restoring this. Yes. Sarah can explain <laughs> very, what she's doing. Oh, you restored this, Sarah? Yeah, I restored that one there. Okay, show us a little Paula bit then, me, of course. Um, basically, we mix lime and sand together to fill in the holes that were getting eroded by, uh -huh. basically, rain Sandstone, and yeah. The day, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we filled in the holes and then let it dry, cleaned it. Now Preserving it the stone and rebuilding yeah. the missing parts. So she's We're rebuilding the... We rebuild Oh, those little edges. Okay. Yeah. Trying to maintain it as far as possible. The what a lovely job, point. Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. Cross it. Thank you. Can I have a gossip Marty, story. Do you want to listen gossip, gossip story? Yeah, we'll gossip. <laughs> we'll, let's go into the more interesting. Oh, this one? Okay. This is a gossip He's story. He's a child. Oh, okay. You see that uh, it's just mentioned the name of a father here. No name of a mother. Usually for the children is written daughter of John and oh. Mary. Just the father. The father was Sir Retro Greg, secretary of the governor. Why there is no mention uh, of a mother? Because uh, as soon as Emily, this uh, girl, was born, the mother fled to France okay. with a French lover, leaving the girl and the husband in Malta. The mother went to France, she changed the name from Susanna to Suzanne, and it opened a bar. Hmm. So when the child died, the husband did not mention the mother because she, she was gone. fled. She's gone. <laughs> Gossip. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at the nice shape of this one. Hmm. Let's keep walking then, Paula. Yeah. Time is running on. I know. And you're getting hungry? Can I be multi Polo? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Italiano only. Si, sí, no. prego. There is an urn on the top of the sarcophagus. You see there are some animals, uh, half Pegasus and half sea monster. The tail is like a sea monster. The, the name of that animal is Hippocampus. Oh, okay. Let's go and Poseidon, show it. Neptune. No. Used. Oh, let's go over and let's show it. This animal to pull his chariot. Oh, you can see guys, just make it out. Neptune was the god of the oceans, the seas. His symbol was the trident. He had the trident. The, the waves to symbolize the oceans mm. and the only crew of the chariot of Poseidon was uh, made by mermaids. Wow, yeah. the mermaids here. It's a Greek fashion urn, most like probably a... copied in some museums yeah, there's a lot from here, Greece. Yeah. Oh. Try and do it. Yeah. 
Michelangelo Vassalli. Vassalli, that is Michel Anton Vassalli, the father of Maltese language. Mm. Oh, okay, this one is the, the one we consider the father, yeah. yes, of yeah. Maltese language. This is a very interesting one, guys. This is the one. You can, there's a bit of a story about this. You want to say it? Go on, eh? um, Basically, Michel Anton Vassalli is the person. He dedicated his life to perfecting the Maltese language and basically he's known for being the founder of the Maltese And he upset language. a lot of people though, I think. Uh, yeah. That's why he's here. The church for sure. Because <laughs> he's, uh, he he's a church. He the church for sure. He, uh, he was, I think he was Catholic, wasn't he? And, he? and he's about the only Catholic here in this... Vassal, Vassali was still a Catholic when he died. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, Thanks to these big issues with the church, he was the buried. Uh, not, uh, he was buried in a uh, not yeah. Catholic. So this cemetery. this could be the only Catholic that's buried here. Guys. Most probably, yes. Yeah. yeah. The first thing that comes up about this cemetery is it's him. Michael, yeah, Michael. Because he upsets lots and lots of people. I tell you something, Paolo. Though it's a very relaxing place. Yes, I have a lot of visitors, but simply they come here. With a book, they sit in a bench yeah. in the shade That's and they just read the book. And just the way it's like, even if in the summer, but it's nice shade as well. Eh? Mm -hmm. So, how long are you here for? British in 1820. 12, how long are you going to stay here for? Um, I come and here. The stones. Um, sometimes, because I just have to um, finish a specific amount of hours. Oh, okay. So. Well, there's, there's just everywhere you look. That are easily re found and restored, especially this one. This young child, this young girl was unknown. Because the British, what is fascinating here? British lost the records. Mm. So we are still finding graves. We are still finding ah. names not seen by anybody else before. And this young girl is the last finding. She, she died during the Crimean uh, War. Crimean war yeah. And the father was from the 23rd Royal Welsh Fusiliers Regiment. Wow, so there's a lot of military here as well. A lot, yeah. The oldest grave of the garden, 1806, oh. a British officer. That is this the oldest. This one here? Yes. And uh, behind your shoulders we have another interesting stone. For two children, but not for the children. But for the father of his children. The oh. father of his children was Commander Spratt, Royal Navy. Commander Spratt, he was the commander of uh, HMS vessel Spitfire. It was a survey vessel. Oh, okay. Spratt passed all his life in Malta, surveying the Mediterranean area. Cyprus, Rhodes, Syria. Spratt was the man that gave to Schliemann the maps to find the Troy. Oh, okay. Schliemann was the German guy that discovered Troy. Also thanks to the help given by Spratt. Oh, okay. Thanks to his researches. So he was involved in the discovery of, uh, of, uh, of Troy. Commander Spratt. Mm, look at this place, guys. It's like... <laughs> so wherever you look, there's so much history. Oh, there's a very nice one over there. I'll show you something. Let me show you this one. Yeah, let's go. This we're gonna be. Uh, we I should have bought the sleeping bag. So, better under restoration. So, in the future, we'll be back in place. In oh, okay. This one Just is a, a very famous uh, character, Sir Harry Houghton. Sir Harry was the commander of the Royal Navy. He died in 1833, and uh, I spoke. Uh, Voice Twice to a family. The family, they live in the UK and the family still has relics from his uh, life in Malta. Oh wow. They still have uh, all the paintings, all the ships he was in command of. He commanded 40 ships in his career. They still have uh, the original furniture, table, bedside tables, so when he died in Malta. The Honourable Sir Henry, Henry Houghton. Henry Houghton. And they still have a silver spoon and a silver milk jar of a breakfast between Sir Henry and Napoleon. Died, uh, After the Waterloo battle, Napoleon was caught by the British, uh -huh. was on the ship of Sir Henry, and before to go to St. Helena Island, they had the breakfast together, and the family still has the relics of a breakfast. Oh, wow. A silver milk jar and a silver spoon. This it's, is certainly a historic part here, lots of... Uh, that's uh, the most uh, preserved part of the garden. Uh, and we have some nice, also nice example of Greek uh, 
So are you looking for volunteers as well? To always, oh, always, okay. always. So if you're interested, guys, to come down in this beautiful yeah. garden, I I'm sure he'll find you a job. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> something to do. We do everything here. Yeah. Apart from the restoration of the monuments, but we do everything. Let me show you something else. Let's just have a walk here, yeah, walking around that this place. That is the most iconic, this big sarcophagus here, is the most iconic monument of a garden. It's a Greek fashion monument. With a lot of... Uh, ...designs, yeah. or symbols. Starting from very, unfortunately, the head of a lady. Oh, it's, yeah. And the tablet were stolen in the 80s, at the end of the 70s. It's very rich of, of uh, symbols. Starting from here, you see there is a, a skull and the bones. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, it's a symbol of death from the medieval period till the beginning of the 18th century. But it's also called the memento mori. Remember, in Latin, remember that you have died or you must die. Mm. There are two birds holding the death, phoenix. So the idea that the bird that reborn from his ashes is holding the death is a strong symbol. The torches upside down with the wings and the flame is still alive. Here we have to go back to the Greek mythology. Mm, we yeah. had a family. All the family was in this business. The mother was the goddess of the night. The father was the god of the deep darkness. They had two children, twins. One was Thanatos the god of death, oh. and one was Hypnos, the god of sleep. If you have a chance to see a painting of Thanatos, usually Thanatos is resting his arm like that on a torch upside down. So the torch upside down is the symbol of Thanatos, the god of death. But here, having the wings and the flame still alive, it could also be a symbol of resurrection. Mm. But the restoration is a Christian concept. Yeah. So it's a contamination. A Greek symbol contaminated with, uh, with uh, a Christian concept. Mm. A lot I don't of, know uh, how many children Thanatos had, <laughs> but his brother Hypnos had four children. It was a bit, of a, a bit of a playboy then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had four children. Were you a playboy? One of his uh, children was Morpheus or Morpheus. The god of dreams. Oh, okay. The other three children were the god of illusions, the god of nightmares, and the god of true dreams. Of these four children of Hypnos, only one had the wings, and this Morpheus, or Morpheus, that is depicted on this side of the monument. Oh, okay. Wow, well, there's a lot all around there. Eh? This is an allegory about the life of a lady. That is Morpheus, or Morpheus. He's holding uh, three flowers and the laurel, the laurel wreath. The laurel means victory. When he's on a grave, victory over death. There is an oil lamp, Greek fashion oil lamp, no flame. No flame means death, always. Uh -huh. The three flowers, the three flowers are poppies, opium flowers. The Greeks uh, use the opium as a drug especially during the ceremonies, for living the real life, the reality, and reaching the dream. Morpheus was the dream. Mm. The dream was a passage, was, or a connection to death. If you have a chance to see a painting of Morpheus, usually Morpheus is depicted sleeping on a bed made of poppies. The poppy is the symbol of Morpheus. Wow. When the morphine was discovered, the name was given, taking the root from Morpheus. So interesting, knowing it's very the, rich. With the, one, uh, yeah, very rich. Yeah. The snakes. The snakes are uh, very interesting. <laughs> the snakes. Oh yeah, that wouldn't think it, that was a snake, but okay. that are eating or is eating his own tail. Yeah. Sometimes a snake, sometimes a dragon. It's a very old Egyptian symbol, but it was used a lot by the Greeks. Uh -huh. In Greek, it has three names. One of them is Ouroboros. A very simple meaning, the circle of the life. The life continues. Yeah. Doesn't matter what's happened to the lady by wow, here. This is a rich one, eh? It's got ah, lots it's of very symbols. Rich. The lady on the top, she's wrapped in a shroud or sudarium. The Greeks and the Romans did not use coffins. 
the Greeks and the Romans used or to cremate the people, so the urn, a symbol of uh, death, or later on, like Jesus, to wrap the people in a shroud. Yeah. She is a very Christian uh, and very classical idea. In nice. allegory about the life, I don't have an explanation to be honest here. No. <laughs> it's and impossible. The, I would imagine this is the time the running out. Eh? The hourglass means uh, the Romans used to say the tempos fugit. The time is flies. running out. He's running out. So and she's got plenty back. of time. Look, she's <laughs> laughing. She's not like us oldies. Hey, we've just discovered this guy down here. Tell us about this, St. Paul. Simple, this is the way how we discover new graves. So some this down there? Yes, there is a grave under here. Simply, the soil, especially in summer when it's very dry and there is no grass, the soil sinks inside the graves. And wow. the stones or the holes... So this could be like a, a grave? Yes, for sure. There is one here and one is behind your so shoulders. so much work to do here. Eh? Yeah. It could be forever. Ah, uh, okay. another one? Yes, that's another one. Well, see? you would think so, because when you see in the... Uh... You see it? So why would that be lower than this? What we have to do is... Uh... There's no six feet under. It's just the, the monument. The monument on top, so it could be the ground... Mm -hmm. The graves are all six feet are built with local stone and six feet uh, deep. Uh -huh. there, is, uh, a, there was a standard in the British Empire. Everywhere you go, South Africa, Australia, US, Canada, all the graves were six feet deep. Till 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Now the rules change, and say, but mm. till 30 years ago, it was a standard. Back to the 17th century, most probably was uh, the mayor of London, after the plague in London, that decided, we don't know why, that six feet was the right depth for a grave. Oh, okay. From the 17th century till 20 years ago, all the graves in the British Empire were six feet deep. Wow. There's so also serial TV, six feet under. Yeah. It's very famous American serial TV. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so we know before uh, uh, to proceed, uh, that are all six feet. Usually you ask a permit to the superintendent like of cultural Roman. heritage. That is a column. When you see a column cut <coughs> or broken, it means somebody died before his age, that young. When the column is full with the top, like the Nelson uh -huh, uh -huh. column in Trafalgar Square, it means eternal life. Are both uh, classical, new classical symbols. And uh, this is certainly this area. It's that rich. Is rich, very rich of, of money. I know, so w we're guessing there's. Everywhere, 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 everywhere you see the grass. If you dig a couple of inches, you find a grave. Oh, this is a, ch a, a child. 14% of the 900 people in the garden are children. Oh, okay. Beautiful. The, the mortality, the rate of birth was very high. Average age of death here is 24 for the men, 20 for the women. So, so Polo, yes. every every week or day you find in these. Roughly every week we, we are able to find something new. And like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, it's a jigsaw ah. puzzle, and Actually, sometimes so. we are able to identify more names thanks to wow. very small pieces. You got loads over here as well. We have uh, hundreds of pieces of marble and hundreds of pieces of, of stones. With this script. I heard some back in the 70s it was like a bit vandalized this they place. Say it was vandalized because yeah. it was open without. Wow, look. That's all inscriptions that you continue to find in the garden. Oh, and look, look up here, little bits and pieces of statues. That and... is a research uh, that the students are carrying on, looking for. Uh, oh, new designs. that view again. Eh? Wow, look at And slowly, slowly, we are adding more. 
Well, as I said, guys, this is just, we're just scraping the surface of this place. Uh, I'm just trying to give you an idea to come down here. It's not far to walk from Floriana. You can just walk down. Parking is not that fantastic. It's a bit difficult to During park. the weekends is much easier. Yeah, yeah. Saturday is empty, the parking space. Mala, thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Thanks to you for coming. Well, I'll have another walk through. But thank you and as well, uh, Sarah. Sarah and Polo. Yeah, Where are you going? I was going to say bye to you. <laughs> He's had enough of me. I want to show you something else. I, was gonna, it's, I, might, I might keep walking around, guys, because I don't want it to be too long. So, uh, of course. Polo's just got so you, much. Just for you. And this out of his head, it just keeps on coming out. These facts and figures. Take care, everybody. Don't forget to see you on the next video. And thanks very much for. I, will, I might stick some photographs on the end.